Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Do you remember November 18, 2003? The website for the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court listed Goodridge versus Department of Public Health as one of the decisions to be released that morning. It had been nine months since the oral arguments in which Chief Justice Marshall deftly led the questioning. The 14 plaintiffs had honestly and vulnerably put themselves out as the human face for all of us for years. And I want to thank them again. They are all here tonight to participate. As the time ticked away that morning, anticipation and anxiety crackled. Would this court rule that the bedrock constitutional promises of equality under law, of liberty for all, mean that same-sex couples would have the equal right to marry? At 10 o'clock, we had our answer. Yes! <laughs> the Supreme Judicial Court broke the historic barrier. They had the courage to be first and sent out a beacon of equality and hope that has since transformed our nation. The author... The author of that correct and courageous opinion, the person whose constitutional analysis lifted up the dignity of every LGBT person and many others besides, Supreme Judicial Court Chief Justice Margaret H. Marshall. The opinion could not have been more eloquent. The very first paragraph said what we had hoped but had not been stated by any high court in our nation. Quote, the Massachusetts Constitution affirms the dignity and equality of all individuals. It forbids the creation of second class citizens. The Commonwealth has failed to identify any constitutionally adequate reason for denying civil marriage to same-sex couples. Answering a question that exposed one of the many stereotypes we faced at the time, why would gay people even care about marriage? Chief Justice Marshall wrote, Marriage fulfills yearnings for security, safe haven, and connection that express our common humanity. And that felt sense of LGBT people's common humanity infuses the opinion, delighting us, enraging others. The court dared to sympathize and empathize with us and confront discrimination, something atypical even today. Quote, the marriage ban works a deep and scarring hardship on a very real segment of the community for no rational reason. The marriage restriction is rooted in persistent prejudices against gay people. The Constitution cannot tolerate such prejudices. And not to be too glass half foolish here, but uh, let's be clear about where we are going. It is the vision set forth in Goodridge that is winning the day. 
Because of that ruling and all it's set in motion, the majority of this nation now agrees that same-sex couples should enjoy the freedom to marry. But, 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 we're only at 14 states in D.C., so there's 36 to go. Now, because same-sex couples could finally marry legally, GLAD was also able to bring the first lawsuits challenging the federal government's discrimination against married same-sex couples flowing from the Federal Defense of Marriage Act. Celebrating with us tonight the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling declaring DOMA Section 3 defunct in U.S. versus Windsor are many of our Gill and Peterson plaintiffs who stood up to challenge DOMA, and I'd like to thank them as well. <clears throat> now, of course, the Goodridge decision is only one thread in a tapestry of Chief Justice Marshall's judicial, legal, and personal work so much of which is dedicated to civil and human rights. As a justice, she has authored important opinions about disability discrimination, safeguards for criminal defendants, child welfare, and that doesn't even really scratch the surface. As a student leader uh, in South Africa's then largest anti-apartheid group, she organized vigils, she raised money, she put forth petitions, uh, for grassroots efforts and took risks to bring an end to apartheid's oppression. Her legal career here in the United States, spanning from Harvard University General Counsel to Boston Bar Association President to law firm partner at Choate Hall and Stewart, is decidedly about justice for all and ensuring equal access to that justice for all, so that no one is left behind. So for all of these reasons, for a brilliant and ongoing career that has advanced human and civil rights at home and around the globe, tonight we honor, tonight we humbly thank Chief Justice Margaret H. Marshall with GLAD's Spirit of Justice Award. I present Justice Marshall.